Thank you, listeners, for being with us on this journey of Curiosity Continuum. We are now in our third year, starting our ninth season. We are excited for what the future holds, and we wanted to celebrate you, the listeners, by looking back at what resonated most with you. Yeah, so we thought maybe periodically we're going to be sprinkling in some encore presentations of certain episodes that everyone really loved. And with that, what we're going to do is kind of riff again on some of these topics, not to uh, respin, but to kind of continue that conversation. We want to explore those regions with you all. So without further ado, here's the encore presentation. In life, we are constantly having conversations with different people from all walks of life. Are you a conversationalist? Do you thrive on the conversation or do you loathe it? Why are you the way you are? Have you had awesome interactions with people and thought, why did that go well? On the flip side, have you had terrible interactions with people and thought the opposite? Think about these questions as we discuss and explore the art of the conversation on this episode of Curiosity Continuum. Thank you for joining us today on Curiosity Continuum. For those of you tuning in for the first time, from me, thank you. And I know Brian th thanks you as well. Thank you. Curiosity Continuum is a movement started by two lifelong friends with a mission to spark the imagination, cultivate the mind, understand diverse perspectives for practical application and the common good. You can find us at www.curiositycontinuum.com. From there, you'll find all of our socials, um, you can click on links. You can send us an email. I'm always, I'm going to encourage you guys every episode, just, just get used to it. I want to hear feedback. I know Brian does as well. We want to be able to interact with you guys. That's what this show is going to, we really believe it's going to thrive. If we can really get a really robust conversation going between people that listen to it and, uh, and, and us. And that, that's what it's all about. <laughs> So today we're going to be talking about um, the art of the conversation, and I am one of your hosts. I'm Josh, and over here we have Brian. Hello, everybody. So the goal of this episode is really just going to, we want you to be able to identify conversation points and develop the skills to do so and to use them wisely. So for me anyway, like I, I do a lot of this stuff on my own. I kind of incorporate these ideas that we're going to be talking about into a everyday conversation, and I don't even think about it. So that's something that we want you to think about as you're going through your, your conversations. And I think part of it, too, is, is the age in which we grew up in. So in the age of digital, there's a lot of social media and other things. What's interesting is that when uh, there, before digital came on board, people had to learn two-way conversations and about everything that they did. Yes. And if you had a chance to hear an excellent speaker or a public speech or something like that, it was kind of more of a rarity. And that's, I think, what made speech class so important for us. Um, you know, in speech class, I was always watching Josh to see what he did because he did better than me <laughs> during <laughs> high school. <laughs> you know, it was actually the, the, the speech class that was kind of brought me down a little bit um, until I learned how to do it later on in my college career. But... Nowadays, you have a lot of options to listen to really excellent public speeches. These are one-way conversations. These are monologues. These are uh, TED Talks or whatever like that. And what it is, it's a lot of one-way communication. And so the model is almost actually flipped where that's more the norm. You can broadcast your thoughts, what you had for dinner, um, any other kind of thing that comes across your mind. But the actual art of a two-way conversation has been... Uh, kind of suppressed or minimized. You kind of see it in your everyday life. Um, people who are afraid to, to talk on the phone and they'd rather text or people who, you know, they'll ghost an interview or something because they just don't want to have that conversation and they don't actually know the protocols and how to deal with that. So we want to talk about this, especially as kind of a bridge builder between uh, the world that was and the world that is today. Right. And on that note, too, I mean, we're not going to get too preachy on this whole thing, I think. But, like, 
like Brian said, we grew up, we grew up really in the middle of the two, you know, digital analog age kind of combining together. So we had to talk to people and we, we actually, even if we didn't want to, we had to do it. And I've seen today, I have actually seen two people sitting next to each other and they're texting each other on their phone because they don't want to actually have the human interaction of talking, which to me is kind of anathema, really. Uh, I would say if you're right there, why don't you just speak to them? But this, these are, and we were, when I was breaking down this episode and when we were talking, Brian and I were talking a lot about it, we knew that these conversations, that people want to have these interactions, they may just not know that they want to, or they may lack the skills to do so. So we're going to try to offer some ideas for you guys to kind of incorporate into your everyday, you know, conversations and skills for you to be able to use. For some of you, this will be uh, like, of course, well, why wouldn't you know that? But let's keep in mind that in the in the eras in which we all grew up in, we had a different set of, of uh, things that were presented to us as far as opportunities, as far as technologies that we used. And so just keep in mind that um, anymore, common sense is no longer common. And this is helping to establish the framework so we can have the, the common framework to be able to have uh, what might resemble common sense to some generations to others would be like, Oh yeah, this is a great thing to be reminded of and learn. Right. So to start this whole, whole off, I just wanted to kind of break down like, what is a conversation? Like what the actual definition of a conversation is. So I looked it up in the dictionary, like any other person would do if I wanted to know what the dictionary said a conversation was. And I think I got a really good answer and a conversation and this is the way the Merriam-Webster Dictionary describes it. It's an oral exchange of sentiments, observations, opinions, or ideas. So an example of this is we had talked enough, but no conversations. There was nothing discussed. So just because you're talking doesn't mean you're having a conversation. You're not discussing actual topics or actual something that it matters, is what this definition is saying. It's also the second definition of it. Um, is an instance of such exchange. Like, for example, we had a quiet conversation. Um, another is an informal discussion of an issue by representatives of government institutions or groups. So this is kind of what we're going to be getting at when we open this up. We're going to be just talking a little about like opening the conversation. The, you know, just to start something like how do you start? How do you talk to somebody? How do you go up to somebody? Maybe Maybe you have an interaction with this person because they are you're at a retail establishment or, um, you know, you're you're at a restaurant or something. You, it could be personal business. It doesn't matter. One of the things to remember and we want to appreciate, too, is that not everybody's wired the same way. But yet this is a, a critical skill to kind of have. I know I was very shy as a child. So much that in fourth grade, when the girl that I liked said hello to me, I ran and hid for the rest of recess. Like that <laughs> actually happened. It stands up my mind. And my mom uh, basically told me, you know, she said, Brian, when you are shy, you are more concerned about what other people think about you than sharing who you are. Absolutely. And she goes, it's, a, it's an inherently selfish act. Now, for the all the different personality things that would come through now, I say, well, well, you're just an introvert or you're an extrovert or whatever that is. But if I really, when I thought about it, I go, that's actually very true. And so some of us in some ways have to be a practiced extrovert. And in a lot of ways, there are skills that I learned. And, you know, an introvert is, is kind of how you would recharge. Like I would rather um, spend time quietly or I'd prefer small groups and that's fine. But you're going to find yourself in situations where you cannot control the situation and you cannot control all the things that happen and you need tools to be able to have wherewithal in those circumstances. And that will serve anybody well as they go forward. You're going to find yourself in those things. And it's always good to kind of know where to pivot to. Even if you have just a few things, a couple things, it's going to help you uh, not have as much awkwardness socially and other things in life. Absolutely. So we want to start by how do you open a conversation? How do you walk up to somebody and talk to them? Small talk helps. Interjecting small bits of humor help. Um, usually funny to the other person more, not you, because it's kind of disarming. Um, this allows you to find like a really path into a conversation. What, it doesn't matter if that conversation is big, small, serious, or not. Um, I always have these conversations you know, with people, 
and and they're usually small. They're usually ten to fifteen second conversations. But you know, you might start off by saying a lot of people talk about the weather, or they say, you know, boy, it's really hot out there. And yes, it is hot. Yeah, I live in South Florida, so when people say it's hot, it's kind of like I know they're trying to be funny, but to me, it's kind of like okay, I get it. You know, it, it, it's hot out. But that is their way of opening the conversation, and it's more funny to me than it is to them. And so they're they're trying they're trying you know they're trying to do that they're trying to say okay like I, you know but then they might go into something totally different that you never thought that they wanted to have that conversation on so this yeah. goes into the next point is like once you've opened that conversation once you break that ice so to speak listen listen to what that other person is telling you um, you know take their points of view and their their thoughts seriously, even if it's something that you don't agree with. And I, I think that's very important, um, especially kind of, I know we find ourselves in kind of more of a polarizing climate today. You're, there are a lot of people have the you're right, you're wrong attitude. You know, they're right, you're wrong attitude, I should say. Um, or vice versa, when they may have valid points. I, I know Brian and I, we, we discuss many things and there's some things that we don't, agree on but we still respect each other and and you know and that is important as well um and th- the listening skill is a, a just a great skill and it is an important skill it's something that really does need to be nurtured i think and especially when you're younger you might not think that listening is that important you think that talking is that important or people to listen to you is important which in reality a lot of your questions or answers or concerns would probably be alleviated, if not totally negated, by just listening to other people and, and listening yeah, to what and they I, have to say. The um, when you have young children, especially, like you don't say, "Do you hear me?" You know, once once you know they're hearing you, you say, "Are you listening to me?" Right. And that that's an active thing. It's not a passive thing, and it seeks understanding. You know, um, I go back to the the opening of conversation. You know what that's trying to do is find a common ground. I think so many people now are trying to say this is how I'm so different from everybody, and this is an important exercise. Don't get me wrong; it's a, an important self discovery thing. Um, when I've heard people say I hate small talk, it's more of like, oh well, why would I talk about the weather? It's like because that's the ground to start finding something common among people. Right? Absolutely, it, the weather affects everybody. Like you can talk about that. Um, you know, I'm a, I'm one of those, uh, probably men in the minority that don't really follow sports a ton. So when people ask me about a sports team, I have to pivot to something else in the conversation. They say, how about that team? And I'm like, I don't really know. You know, I, I'm being honest. I don't want to say, oh yeah, that team <laughs> and put on like, <laughs> I know what they're talking about. Cause I'm like, I'm, pr- you know, I know enough about sports, but I'm one of those guys that goes, um, you know, go team, do the things, win the points, <laughs> all that kind of stuff. You know, sometimes that's as deep as I can go with it, but I want to try to find a way for them to uh, relate to me. You know, um, in the listening portion of it, sometimes it's giving them an, something enough to hang on to so they can tell you something so you can listen. Um, one of the, the things that comes to mind is that I have a friend of mine who's uh, in, in IT, and, you know, he's very good at what he does. He loves his family well and stuff like that. But he doesn't like, like, what he calls small talk or conversation or things like that. He'd rather just, especially in a work context, rather have his head down and do things. The one thing that people really love, regardless of how much they, they would uh, like small talk or not, is actually asking advice or asking something that they're good at. So some of the probing questions when you open, depending on what type it is, like, you know, what is this person good at? What are they really passionate about? And then when you ask them about it, listen and really be intent about it. You might learn something along the way. And sometimes you just know, un- know enough to be dangerous to kind of ask the next question. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know? Right. It's a lot of, a lot of times with me, I'm like, you know, there's this thing. Well, yeah, you make a and, footnote of it, you know, that's, it's important. Yeah. I, there was a, another friend who had a fiance that was doing really deep, like, uh, he's doing his doctoral dissertation on uh, economics, you know, and, I, you know, I don't know a ton about all the, the here's the, the pantheon of, of economic experts and things like that, because that was never my, my focus in any of my studies, you know, but I, I love how, can, how economies work and things. And he said, well, you know, it, this was about this. And he said it was really more um, about the Keynesian model of blah, blah, blah. 
And I said, oh, so Keynesian, blah, blah. And I knew enough to ask the question. And then he opened up because I knew just enough to say like, hey, tell me more about that. It might be something like this. Sure. And that's that's a great example of how, you know, you can relate listening to a an active use of listening to actually getting you know your point across or later in the conversation using that to your advantage um another thing is you know while you're listening you know use thoughtful compliments you know say you know what that's a great idea you know you speak to each other it's a two-way street so you you have to it's body language as well as what you say and and really it is body language more than what you say so you know, look engaged, use compliments, you know, don't, don't put the other person down, understand, you know, these different points are important. And, and if you don't understand something, ask a question. It, there's nothing wrong with asking questions. It actually shows that you're, um, you're being open. Like if you don't understand something to say, Hey, this is it. You know, the other thing with when you are probing and asking the different things and trying to find, you know, Hey, that's a really good idea. It's kind of like a yes. And type of situation where you're trying to find the way that you can continue the conversation. Sometimes it comes to a logical end and you don't need to force it, but it's really good to try to continue to find kind of like the the way forward. And sometimes people give up too easily to, you know, when you could really have a really good exchange with somebody. And like I said, it doesn't have to be always, talking about the deep things of life. Sometimes it's just that. And you could even rack it up as like, I practiced this today. I got better at this today. I, you know, I blessed somebody today by listening to them or that type of thing. I I gave some kind of value because I I said something that I felt was meaningful. Absolutely. And and kind of wrap into the question thing. And Brian was touching on this a lot was being nice. Be nice. You always hear the you know terms. You know you catch more flies with honey than vinegar, you know that kind of thing. And it is true. It is true though. Very true. And the you know in the pleases and thank yous, which is something that we've kind of gotten. I think as a society on a societal level, have kind of gotten away from a little bit. It's gotten to the point where like when I take a flight or I go, you know, have some kind of interaction with somebody, even a customer service interaction. If I say thank you or or pleased to somebody, they look at me weird. I had that happen on a flight. I was actually going to see Brian here, and um, I was I was at the front desk. You know, they were they were asking for people to check bags or whatnot, and I I already had checked everything. I didn't need to have anything checked. And I said, well, you know, did you guys get enough bags to check? Do you need more room on the flight? Things like that. The flight attendant was extremely was extremely nice to me. She, she said, you know, no, we we found everything all right, okay. And I said, well, thank you for that information. And she looked at me like I literally was a two-headed, you know, person. Um, <laughs> yeah. But they're not used to that. And and people in service industries know, and I think they really do kind of thrive on those people that are, that, that treat them like human beings because that's what they are. Fast food restaurants that consistently gets the high marks for customer services, Chick-fil-A, it's because they, they reinforce again and again and again of just some what used to be common courtesy, you know. Right. Yes, please. Thank you. My I'd pleasure. I'd love to. Yeah. You know, sometimes it's almost a game to say, how many times can you make the, the person say my pleasure after? <laughs> right. You know, if you say thank you, like, let's just see how good they are at it. And, you know, I've, sometimes I've done that just to say, I wonder how many times they would do it. But they've reinforced their culture so much of being polite and being a servant to one when they come in. Say, so, hey, this person's coming in. They want that. And... It used to be that, well, that's kind of normal. Like you would just expect somebody to say please and thank you if they're serving you. And that's not the case anymore. So it almost stands out as the bright and shining star when that happens. It's almost a um, a, a sad commentary on how the world is today when please and thank you becomes the extraordinary customer service experience. Yeah, absolutely. And, and wrapping into this too is, is being positive. You know, when you're doing the please and thank yous, be positive. It always helps you underline points. If you become negative or if you say like when when you're listening to somebody and you react negatively towards one of their opinions, which is okay if you react negatively, don't get personal with it. Once you get personal and you start attacking somebody, they're going to retreat into, you know, hunker down into their own little 
own own ideas and they're going to be like, okay, I'm not going to listen to you anymore. Then basically that conversation for you at that time is probably over. And, and this has happened to me in, um, unfortunately, in service industry areas or customer service at, you know, a Walmart or a Target where I was trying to return something. For example, I didn't have a receipt and I didn't, I didn't understand the store policies, even though they were written on the wall because they weren't following those store policies and and, and the, the customer service person that was there didn't really um, explain it well to me but as soon as I, and I'm guilty of it I get frustrated so I maybe said something or just did something wrong and I'm like and and I knew that that when I did it I knew it was the wrong thing to do but then there's very little chance of recovering from that yeah the thing that um, I think about this is sarcasm <laughs> Sarcasm is really saying something and meaning something very different. It's just a twisting and perversion of words. I used to be very sarcastic because I thought I was being clever about things. And more often than not, the overwhelming majority of the time, I set people on the defensive. I right. caused people to shut down in a conversation. I hurt the people I loved more. And it really more had to do with um, you know, me not valuing the relationship or some bitterness in me that is kind of emerging and, and using... Uh, you know, conversational intellect or something like that to, to, you know, try to jab at somebody. And that's always something that is, um, you know, maybe rewarding to the person who's being sarcastic, but it always costs the other person something. And so often people will say, well, people don't understand me. It's like, right, because you're not actually saying what you mean. And those type of things, when you, what, you say something opposite to what you mean, people are always guessing right. about where they stand with you or what it is. And so... Um, you know, what I've chose to do in my life is just erase that. And so people know, like Brian says, yes, he means yes. If he says no, he means no. And there's no mystery with that. And it's helped every relationship from that point when I have done my best to strip that out of the relationship. Yeah. I mean, and that's a great point too, because, you know, you always hear this thing, you know, do what I, I do or do what I say, don't, not what I do. You know, and and myself in my life, I'm I always try to be a principled person. If I say something, I mean it. Like I want to be an honest, trustworthy person that people rely on. So I want to make sure that if I say something, I mean it. So I don't want to say something and like Brian is saying, like a sarcastic way. And I do that a lot. I mean, I think we all do, especially with friends. But when when you're into these kind of conversations, you're just not going to do that. It's just not. You know, you're you're not trying to put the other person down anything and or anything and that it, people just get offended and it it just starts out it just ends up on the wrong foot and you just keep in mind too that every, not every conversation that you have has to lead to an opportunity like i know brian is self-employed um i'm not but i i have a lot of conversations with people and you know it's more like putting a comma on something or Maybe you're just there just to introduce yourself and you want to have a good quick 10 minute conversation. You want to learn a little bit about the person. So next time, you know, you, you might be able to use that or just so you know them. And once you know somebody on a more of a personal than professional level, it does seem that your conversations will be easier. First of all, I, I, in fact, I believe they are. And the person is not just assigning like a value to you. For example, oh, that's just that guy. Or, you know, that's Josh. They know they know a little bit about me more. So they put, I mean, it's more of a humanizing effect. It really is. The more times that I've been approached uh, in a professional context where people are trying to sell me immediately when I don't know them, you know, the old adage of, you know, business is built on relationships is absolutely true. Uh, even though I spend a lot of my career, uh, you know, my, my focus in some of the work I do to help people build those relationships more through uh, the way they're doing things or procedural things or whatever like that. The core of it is always relationships because the only way that business goes forward is with human beings. There's no such thing in business as uh, taking humans completely out of it. There's always some involvement somewhere with human beings. And the more that you can nurture that relationship and trust and not always go for the quick sale, it'll, it'll always be most beneficial for everybody in the long run. Sure. And that that's uh, that that's the gist of this. I mean, you know, we want to challenge you guys too. you know, use some of these ideas. And it, it is a lot. You know, this is your like kind of mind nugget for for quite a while. I think um, it, it, you're going to be thinking yourself like after I kind of we kind of were talking about doing this subject. We did kind of I think I found myself more introspective 
and you know looking into myself and am I doing these things or am I how am I going to integrate some of this so I want to challenge you guys you know I really want to challenge you to make a conscientious decision to use some of these skills even and if you use them already great you know and and keep using them but maybe integrate you know some of this if you don't use it into you know how you approach conversations the more you practice this stuff um, the more it becomes second nature and it really doesn't become like an exercise at that point it's just part of who you are I think there yeah I have a friend's wife who always has like some like about three go-to questions and you know I've seen her do that she goes when there's an awkward moment she goes she breaks out these questions it's great like who's what was your first concert that you remember or that type of thing and it sounds funny but it actually gets the room talking and so for those of you who feel like well I don't have enough situational wherewithal yet to be able to do it go in with three questions that you'd be interested to know about somebody genuinely that you could share a, a common experience with what was your first uh you know concert that you went to or what was uh the favorite what was the best thing that happened to you last week those things start and then you can start relating as people absolutely and you know by using these skills practicing them um you're going to become proficient proficient at this and proficient at convert you know having conversations which is it's it's really it's going to open a lot of doors for you people are going to remember you you know they're going to say oh i had a great conversation with that guy i'm going to or that lady or that person i'm going to i'm going to remember you know they're going to remember you when you need them to or just when you meet them again and this is going to open up a lot of opportunities for you so i think that's probably a good place huh brian I think so, yeah. So I think this is a good place to kind of put a comma in our conversation until next time. And the challenge to you guys in your uh, fundamental human experience is to start a conversation with somebody that you don't know and ask them a, a couple of questions and put it to practice. You'll be amazed at how many people are just um, are uh, you know taken aback by the fact that you asked them how their day was and you actually listened. More than just like, yep, I'm right. good, and you keep walking <laughs> on. You know, it's like, yes. it's like, how are you good? And before you even get the words out your mouth, like that person, that homie is gone, and they are doing something else. But um, take the time to do that, and and go in with the kind of the spirit of wanting to give somebody something, whether it's happiness or just a moment to listen. And uh, you know, I guarantee you, somebody's day will be better because of it. So, until next time, this is Brian. And this is Josh. For Curiosity Continuum. Thank mm-hmm. you.